Today we will be discussing at-home measurement for hydrophobicity in surfaces. For this project, we decided that we would develop a means to fabricate a superhydrophobic surface. The purpose of said surface would be to repel microbes in order to make surfaces that many people come into contact with daily more sanitary, which would prevent the spread of diseases via these surfaces. This study analyzed the relationship between surface properties and the contact angle of water on said surfaces to determine the best method to manufacture a superhydrophobic surface. We will first present our background information, then explain the experimental procedure, show the results and data, and wrap up with our goals and improvements for the future. Surface science is a study of interactions between two surfaces with different physical or chemical properties. The interactions occur between any of the states of matter, solid, liquid, or gas. For our experiment, we study the interactions between the liquid and solid layer. Many of the interactions that occur are due to surface properties such as hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity. A hydrophobic surface repels water, and a hydrophilic surface absorbs water. These properties can be quantified through the contact angle. The contact angle is geometrically defined as the point of intersection between the liquid and solid gas interface. In the Young's equation, the contact angle calculation is shown, and it is based on the surface tension at the solid vapor interface, solid liquid interface, and liquid vapor interface. There are many examples of hydrophobicity in nature, such as a shark's skin. The textured layer of the shark's skin has high frictional force, preventing bacteria from entering the skin. The shark's skin has been mimicked by a professor at the University of Florida, as shown in the diagram on the left, where we have a real Galapagos' shark's skin and the shanklet technology that mimics its hydrophobicity. Another example is the lotus leaf, whose cell wall causes water to beat up and allows the leaf to clean itself as the droplets fall. For our purposes of this experiment, we discovered relationships between the sandpaper, the sandpaper's grade and hydrophobicity. We did this by looking at the micro level, the pillars and their properties, such as their height, width, and spacing. As the grit sizes of the sandpaper increased, the finer the surface and the smaller the particle sizes, decreasing the width and the space between each of the pillars. Thus, the surface was more densely packed, decreasing air pockets and the ability for water to enter the surface. Therefore, the water would beat up on the surface, proving hydrophobicity. However, they, we could not determine a relationship between height and hydrophobicity due to limitations and resources. We were able to replicate the experiment to be compatible in the home environment. With sheets of sandpaper and dimensions of 9 inches by 11 inches, we cut relatively smaller squares, such as by, such as by 4 centimeters by 4 centimeters, but they were bigger if they were needed. After the square was cut, we put a layer of silicone on the surface and spread it as evenly as possible. However, we needed to wait at least four hours to make sure the silicone was dry and preserve the imprint. When it was dry, we peeled off the layer carefully to make sure there were no tears and had enough surface area to test on. If the silicone could not be removed, the procedure was redone with oil to make sure it could peel off easier. A successful application and removal should look like the picture on the right. Then, we extracted water into a syringe and needle, of which any gauge and volume was used but recorded. Then we conducted five trials by placing five droplets onto the silicone surface and took pictures of them. With the pictures, we drew lines of the contact angles using a digital app and measured them with protractors. We also reviewed the data to remove the outliers to make sure to eliminate human inaccuracies as much as possible and make sure the data trend was prominent. The pictures show the process of measurement. This table is a cumulative average contact angle from 50 trials that we conducted for the control experiments on post-it notes. The reason we chose post-it notes as the control is that their surfaces are relatively standard regardless of where they are purchased from. As can be seen, the control angle was 79.7 degrees, demonstrating that the silicone material in and of itself is relatively hydrophobic. Each of these data points are an average of 20 trials per micron size. There is an observable upwards trend such that as the particle size decreases and the sandpaper is more fine, the contact angle increases. As compared to the control of 79.7 .7 degrees, 
The silicone molds that were imprinted on finer grits of sandpaper had greater contact angles and were thus more hydrophobic. The imprints from sandpapers with larger particle sizes, specifically those from 68 to 200 microns, caused an adverse effect that made the surfaces more hydrophilic. This is most likely because the air pockets formed were large and not small enough to essentially hold the water molecule droplets up. This error can be attributed to the variable pillar heights, widths, and spacings on coarser sandpapers. No data points were observed to be less than 55 degrees. When printer toner was lightly powdered on a surface and water droplets were deposited onto said surface, it yielded the largest contact angle out of all of the tested substrates. It produced a contact angle that was greater than the control and the highest sandpaper grade by 163.8% and 121% respectively. The toner proved to be a much more effective alternative to the silicone moldings due to the very small nanoparticles creating air pockets to hold up the water. Despite the fact that the impressions did not have any average contact angles near 150 degrees, the minimum for a surface to be super hydrophobic, the silicone impressions are still viable. Silicone impressions have a tilt angle, which is the minimum angle at which these particles fall off due to gravity. More hydrophobic surfaces will have smaller tilt angles. For example, a P3000 silicone impression will require a smaller angular displacement for the bacteria to roll off of it in comparison to a P80 silicone impression. Thus, the hydrophobicity of the silicone impression in conjunction with the tilt angle creates a feasible product that can combat the spread against germs. In terms of error, we had no atomic force microscope. Hence, we could not precisely measure the contact angle. Secondly, there was human error due to the inaccurate responses between the human eye and the hand. Additionally, the photos of the droplets were not taken exactly perpendicular to the substrate. Thus, an artificial tilt angle was created, which could have increased or decreased the measured contact angle. Also, when removing the silicone impression from the sandpaper, some silicone uh, remnants were left behind, which compromised the integrity of the imprints in some areas. Lastly, for the silicone application process, human skin cells and other germs could have gotten into between the gaps of the nanoparticles of the sandpaper, resulting in less air gaps and thus a smaller contact angle. In recent weeks, the impression successfully demonstrated the ability of silicone to mirror the imprints of abrasive surfaces and adopt their properties. The next step is to manufacture these impressions into public areas to increase public safety by decreasing the spread of unwanted microbes. Even after the pandemic ends, a much more health conscious public may continue to utilize the hydrophobic impressions to make public spaces safer. There are improvements we could add to our experiment. Instead of using manufactured sandpaper, we could use 3D printed nanosurfaces to be more precise and hydrophobic. We could also measure for certain properties of pillars, such as width, height, and spacing, in order to make sure that we can create the most hydrophobic surface possible. Finally, in order to make sure our data is more sophisticated, we could use lab equipment such as the contact angle measurer to eliminate human error in our measurements. With all these improvements, our experiment could be much more refined. Lastly, we would like to acknowledge and thank the following people for their contributions to our project. Thank you.